I'm Andy Ely, Senior Funeral Director for G Seller Independent Funeral Directors, and we've been serving bereaved families since 1910. I'm sure you're all well aware there's lots of different myths, taboos and misconceptions around what happens behind the scenes within the funeral profession. So we decided to put together this series of podcasts to answer those questions and hopefully dispel those myths. So please do like, share and subscribe and send those questions, send them to liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk and we will do our absolute best to answer them for you. It genuinely is our family caring for your family. We'd like to pause and take a moment to mention our partner for this podcast, Golden Charter. This podcast contains promotional messages about funeral planning. G Seller & Company Limited is an appointed representative of Golden Charter Limited, trading as Golden Charter Funeral Plans, which is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. We know it's never easy to think about death, but there are several good reasons why having a funeral plan makes perfect sense. From an emotional, practical and financial point of view, planning your funeral in advance is a chance to take control, feel prepared and get peace of mind for you and the ones you care about. We work in partnership with Golden Charter, one of the UK's largest funeral plan providers who have over 30 years experience and have helped over 900,000 people plan ahead for their funeral. Working together, G Seller and Golden Charter can offer you the personal service and support when it matters most and the reassurance and the security of a leading funeral plan provider. Welcome to the latest episode of Lifting the Lid. Today we have our um, partner in funeral plans, Carly Ross from Golden Charter. Welcome, Carly. Thank you. Thank you for making the journey. Um, quite a journey this morning, I understand. It was a bit of an early start, but thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to see you. And of course, we all know Joseph. Now, to, strength, to sort of illustrate the strong relationship that we have between Golden Charter and us as G Seller, this is why we have Joseph here to sort of just cement that. So, Carly, funeral plans. What is a funeral plan? Talk us through the basics of a funeral plan. So, a funeral plan is basically a simple way of making financial provision for your funeral in advance and also setting out the arrangements, so what you would like to have included. So you can choose, you know, the kind of service that you would like, the funeral director that you would like to use. Um, I think a funeral plan is really about peace of mind to be honest it's about okay. reassurance um for you and also your family members that these questions have been kind of thought through in advance um and taken care of um i, I think another reason people or consider funeral plans is because of the protection against rising costs. Rising costs, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you may be aware there's an annual report that comes out, um, cost of dying report, and it shows that kind of like most things, um, funeral uh, costs um, are increasing over time. So with a funeral plan, what you're doing is you're able to secure your funeral director services costs at today's prices. So it's giving you some protection against rising costs. Brilliant. Brilliant. Funeral planning, the, um, the general financial planning, what, what are the benefits of, of, of doing that? You've sort of touched on them loosely there. Can you just elaborate a little bit on that for us? Yeah, so I think, um, I think it's kind of interesting to possibly consider funeral planning like other forms of financial planning more widely. You okay. know, we kind of talk about, you know, we make provision for our pensions from the earliest point at which we're in the workforce. Um, but funeral planning um, is not quite regarded in the same way. Um, so I think it's interesting to kind of consider it in that way. In terms of benefits, I suppose a funeral plan is a little bit, or it's kind of, other forms of later life planning, you're maybe setting aside a sum of money or you're you know, kind of insuring a sum of money. Mm -hmm. um, but with a funeral plan, I suppose you're going a little bit further. You know, you are um, actually setting out your wishes um, rather than just making financial provision. Okay. Golden Charter, do you work with independents, um, corporate entities? Just tell us a little bit, if possible, just about who you work with. About Golden Charter, yeah. yeah. So we work with the largest network of independent funeral directors okay. like yourselves, and um, okay. so family-run businesses um, who work with us to offer our plans on our behalf. Perfect. 
What happens? I mean, this is one of the big, big questions. What happens to the money when a family mm -hmm. prepays a mm -hmm. funeral? Mm -hmm. So customer payments are held within the Golden Charter Trust. So that's a separate legal entity to Golden Charter. So it has almost 1.2 billion under management uh, and it's managed by a board of independent trustees. Okay. It's basically their job to um, hold on to that money and protect it and ensure that it's there to pay for the funeral, however far into the future that may be. Uh, customer payments are also covered by the financial services compensation scheme. Um, so you, as you will be aware, funeral planning was recently regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Um, so I think offering kind of increased um, protections and reassurance that um, you know customers' monies are protected. So I'm going to actually pitch a question to Joseph now mm. as well. His experiences with us as a as mm -hmm. a company as G seller working as an appointed representative. You know what is that experience from from our perspective? So. We as GSL have worked with Golden Charter since they were established um, about 30 years ago. And the journey's changed over time as the needs of funeral plans and, and families has changed. But I think the reason why we, we've we always chosen to work with Golden Charter is, number one, they only work with independent family funeral directors like ourselves. Um, number two, they provide an appointed business manager so they can go through things that they're solely focused on funeral plans. And obviously at GSL, we're not just doing funeral plans, we're doing at need funerals, uh, bereavement support and, and memorials. So it's important that we've got a partner that, that we can rely on and we they can bring information into us that, that we wouldn't necessarily know ourselves. Also, the the trust fund uh, that we've, we've already touched on, um, it's overfunded. And so if everyone that's got a funeral plan will go on charter, passes away um, at the same time, that's, that's not going to happen. But if it did, there's still money left over. And I think that's a really powerful thing to be able to tell families um, because not every trust fund is necessarily like that. And that's exactly what you were saying about where the funds funds go. They're not actually with Golden Charter. So I think it's important yeah. to say that important. Golden Charter is a separate company to yeah. G Seller, but Absolutely. we work in partnership together. Yeah. And the trust fund is separate from Golden Charter as well. Yeah. So Funeral plans, um, they're not like life insurance. So we've touched on it briefly. So just mm -hmm. can you can we go in a bit more detail as to what yeah. the differences are? Yeah, sure. So a funeral, pl a funeral plan is prepayment of a service. So unlike life insurance, I suppose, where there's money there, you're going that one step further with a funeral plan. So you're actually documenting and arranging your funeral wishes. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it was really brought to life for me recently. Um, I was visiting one of our other funeral director partners uh, and I was able to see the difference, I think, between a customer or a family um, that that funeral director was supporting who had recently suffered a bereavement and understanding the complexity of everything that you need to take that family through, all the questions that you need to ask them versus when a funeral plan was in place and the funeral director explained it to me as, you know, he was able to say to the family member, look, mum actually had a funeral plan in mm -hmm. place. So really what the conversation today about is crossing the T's, dotting mm -hmm. the I's, um, because actually all these questions have already been gone through. And I think for me, seeing that um, in reality really brought it home to me, um, I think, about what that kind of additional step um, is involved in a funeral plan versus mm -hmm. perhaps some other form of yeah. um, leaving money. I think, I think that's really powerful because... To have no uncertainty about final wishes, like you know, as a funeral director as yeah. well, like myself, it's really, really important that the next of kin, or say, for example, someone passed away and they've got two or three children, all those children might not necessarily agree on what they think their loved one's wishes would be. So to be able to take away that any element of doubt of exactly what their loved one's wishes are is really powerful, and it and it puts it puts people at ease knowing that everything they're doing it is literally to the letter of what their loved one asked for. And it's really powerful. I can imagine um, as a family member, it must feel like you're almost like, giving you confidence that you're doing the mm. right thing by mum. You know, this mm. is knowing this is actually what she wanted. Yeah. I know this is what she wanted rather than feeling, am I going to get this right? Am I really um, following her wishes? Um, and I think that's the... Yeah, so as a funeral director, I've, I've mentioned in a previous episode, having that paperwork in front of you with your loved one's wishes mm -hmm. all in place yet we're getting the music right mm -hmm. yet we're getting the venue right. absolutely everything is right and what you've just said there is absolutely true mm -hmm. that kind of concern about 
from the, the loved ones that are remaining, if uh, other gang things, right? Is this what we should be mm-hmm. doing? It's gone because mm-hmm. it's already been discussed mm-hmm. and chosen. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, absolutely. and it's really important as well to, to mention that not every element of of a way, of, a, of a person's wishes has a cost implication. So if a person wants to be dressed in a, their wedding dress or they want to be dressed in their pyjamas or whatever, you can go right into detail. Literally, you can go into as much detail as you want because there's different types of funeral plans. You can have a set plan, um, so that's uh, an overall amount of money with an allowance towards third-party costs, or you can have what's called an independent way plan with Golden Charter, where literally the family itemise every single element of that funeral plan. Um, so it's not kind of a broad brush approach. It's, it's a lot more definitive of what the family actually want, which mm-hmm. is really powerful. So it's a it's flexibility important. element you think is quite key. To Absolutely also... important. And so what's your experience then of, cu- um, of working with customers with the funeral plan in place? How do you, do you see that as pr- kind of bringing a sort of element of reassurance and comfort it, It's really important. Yeah, I really, I'm, a, I'm a massive advocate mm-hmm. of it because the family literally have nothing to worry about apart from deciding on the time and date and we just literally go through ratifying the information that their loved yeah. one's given us and some families um, and particularly families I've dealt with sometimes I've, got, I've had the privilege of actually put, providing the funeral plan in the first place and then actually looking after the person when they've passed away so I've mm-hmm. seen that mm-hmm. that loved one all the way through and I can actually remember sitting down with that mm-hmm. person that's now sadly passed away and them talking about some mm-hmm. of their wishes and I can recount some of those experiences with their loved one and that really puts people at ease Um, and some people they leave open-ended wishes of like I like roses but I want my daughter to decide on the the type of um, rose arrangement that she wants to create for me Mm -hmm. and the family like that their their Mm -hmm. mums essentially left them something to Mm -hmm. input their mm-hmm. personality on their, their loved one's funeral, which is important. And I suppose the other benefit is that the money's there straight away um, and exactly. to pay for those services, it's available yeah. immediately without having to wait for um, money to come from an estate yeah, exactly. or so on. Yeah, we haven't got to worry about the, the financial implications, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. How long has Golden Charter been working with um, independent funeral directors? So we have a long history. So we have been um, working with independent funeral directors for over 30 years. 30 years yeah. Well. So um, I suppose we, I, I think picking up on the point that you made earlier, Joseph, about the partnership, I think that is a real, um, a really important thing from our point of view, from a customer perspective, because I think the value of the partnership that we have with independent funeral directors is incredibly important because customers are getting that local expertise, knowledge, care from their local funeral director alongside um, the being able to work with a trusted national provider. So I think that partnership and that balance um, is quite powerful. Um, and yeah, there's infrastructure at Golden Charter that they give, they get, they provide us insights and things like that 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 we wouldn't necessarily have ourselves from from a more national perspective. That can actually we can tailor it to to our local community and make a difference. Is that one of the reasons why we chose Golden Charter? Absolutely. It was a, before my time. My dad chose, but I, I uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's been passed down to me, and I, I think they're the right partners for us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a shared focus on the customer. You know, mm. I think from our point of view. You know, we're really customer centric. We talk to our customers regularly. We know that over 92% are satisfied or extremely satisfied. Mm -hmm. Uh, And also um, kind of over 900,000 people have chosen to plan ahead with us. Mm, That's an awful big number. um, And and I think just sharing that customer focus and customer centric Mm -hmm. values um, with the independent funeral directors we partner with is, is really important. What does the future look like? The, the you know funeral, funeral planning in the future, uh, regulation. That's know, a great question. A um, so I suppose looking back, first of all, I think Financial Conduct Authority regulation of the funeral planning market has been hugely positive, and I think is likely to have given customers um, kind of increased um, reassurance. Mm-hmm. Um, looking ahead, I think that. You know, touching on the point I made earlier, I think increasingly um, there's an opportunity for funeral planning perhaps to be considered more like other forms of later life planning. Okay. So if you think about retirement planning, you yeah. see all corners of government and industry really coming together um, to kind of promote the benefits of um, planning ahead for your retirement. And I think um, for funeral planning, there's an opportunity to kind of do do likewise and make those conversations a bit more 
bit more mainstream, a bit more natural, and I think there is a I think there's a shift towards that that it is becoming less taboo, if you like, yeah. and more of a kind of mainstream conversation, yeah. and people are understanding the the value that um, is there from from doing that and opening up those conversations. Right, that's kind right, of the right. purpose of this podcast, really, exactly. to decide and try and break down those taboos and have these conversations to just raise awareness, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the FCA, so I mentioned regulation. Mm -hmm. um, is is that likely to? Is there going to be more regulation? Do you feel? Or do you... So um, obviously, and Joseph, you'll know more about this, but regulation of the at meat um, funeral um, market is coming. Um, I think financial conduct authority regulation of the funeral planning market has been really positive, as I mentioned, I, because I think it's. It's really strengthened um, the standards and everybody's working to those same rigorous standards set out by the FDA. Yep. And I think that is really important from a consumer point of view. Um, and I think, um, you know, that widening of, of that into the Absolutely you know, necessary well. for the widening of the regulation. Yeah. It won't be the FCA that regulates acne yeah. funerals, but the government most likely are going to regulate acne funerals. But yeah, it's really important that wider regulation comes in. Absolutely. I think it's important to stress as well. Yeah. That, um, um, we have to have continual professional development and you have to be properly... Um, 16 hours a Yeah, year. 16 hours. So that's, a, in all honesty, it's something that I don't do, which is why I've mm -hmm. got Joseph here as well mm -hmm. in this conversation. So the conversations mm -hmm. about funeral plans with mm -hmm. the client, with the family, mm -hmm. it's all done properly. I mean, uh, you can talk from experience there, can't you, Joseph? Yeah, absolutely. So G. Seller being an appointed representative of Gone Charter, so there has to be an appointed person within the business, which is me. Um, and then the, there is planned sellers within the business that essentially have to follow the FCA process that Golden Charter have laid out for us. So we make sure that customers know exactly what they're buying, um, and it's not just a, it's not done on the back of a fag packet. Essentially, it's um, it, it, it's done properly. So families can be, like Carly said, they can be rest assured that they're dealing with something that's uh, reputable and it's it's done professionally. Brilliant, brilliant. Marketing. So who? Who markets the funeral plans? Is it us? Is it yourself? Do we work together? How, how does it how does it work? Just just for the listeners. So uh, a kind of partnership approach again, okay. I would say, Andy, um, and it's really about um, from our point of view supporting our independent funeral director partners um, to connect with prospective possible funeral plan okay. customers. You know, within your community in the most kind of sensitive um, kind of. Uh, you know, appropriate way possible. Um, so, Joseph, you've probably got more of an insight into this, leading on the marketing. That yeah. You so, take. so we're really we're really proactive in in funeral planning and marketing because I think there's a funerals are still a taboo subject, less so than they used to be. Hence, why we're doing a podcast like this. Absolutely. Um, but as well, um, some people don't necessarily connect a funeral plan with a funeral director. They see it as two separate entities, and that's one thing that we're really passionate that we want to encompass the two together because if you get a few, if you take a funeral plan out with a with a particular company it doesn't necessarily mean you can have your chosen funeral director okay. so we want to be as proactive as possible to make sure that we can look after the people that want us to look after them absolutely brilliant so carly uh, how, how long have you been with golden charter uh over six years now yeah excellent yeah. it's a long time so how does it feel um looking after the families the way you do. Just a bit of a personal question there. Well, you know, what's what's the impact on you as an individual? Yeah, I um I, I really believe in the in the product and actually the okay. value that it brings to so mm. many people. I think a key part of the role that I do is um, is working with our independent funeral director partners like yourselves to understand what information and support we can provide to you to help you um, connect as effectively as possible within your communities uh, and offer funeral plans. So it's a really interesting role and one that I'm really privileged to, to be part of. Good. A real Nothing. tailored approach. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. It's great. And it's great to see this strong relationship that we've got across two completely separate companies yeah. that kind of work together yeah. 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 to look after the family that's yeah. in need. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to tell us um, before before we leave? I don't think <laughs> Put you on the spot? Put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were maybe going to ask me if I had a funeral plan uh, in place. Actually, it's a good question. Oh. 
Well, not yet, but I absolutely <laughs> do intend to. I've um, I've gotten as far as deciding what music I would like, oh, but okay. um, I've not actually got my plan in place. But I, I so pitch that to. question back at me. <laughs> and Andy, yourself? Do you no, have I haven't plan got a plan in place? in place, but I've got one song in place ready. One song in mm. place. Can and I've ask? got a three-page essay <laughs> of all my funeral wishes in the file. Yes, and we're all well aware of said wishes <laughs> as well. <laughs> Not for a long time. <laughs> Carly, Good. Joseph, thank you very much both for your time. Um, a safe journey back, Carly, as well. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, please do like, share, subscribe. If you have any questions, email them to liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk. We will do our absolute best to answer them for you. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.